hello and thanks for tuning in to On the River. I am your host, Joe Morgalek, and I'm very excited to be back with you this week, bringing you the latest in local information for our beautiful Blue Water area. We've got lots of interesting topics to dive into this week, including an update on the coronavirus infection rates and restrictions, a contest put on by the Friends of the St. Clair River, and a major league debut for a Tigers player who is likely to be a star pitcher on the team for years to come. To kick this week off, I'd like to share with you a bit of news that I think everyone will be happy to hear. COVID infection and death rates have plummeted over the course of the last several weeks, and as a result of these declines, in conjunction with the high vaccination rate in our state, having 60% of residents already received a shot of the vaccine and over 50% being fully vaccinated, Governor Whitmer has announced that there will no longer be any state-mandated mask restrictions and all activities, both indoor and outdoor, will be allowed at full capacity. For many, the lifting of all COVID restrictions serves as a final step as we close the book on the coronavirus pandemic. Others still feel concerned as there are concerning variants circulating in Michigan, but as the infection rates are so low and have been for a couple of months now, state leaders have determined that it is safe to move forward with no restrictions set in place. Also in the news for this week, Governor Whitmer has recently proclaimed a World Refugee Day in Michigan with the intentions of highlighting Michigan as a safe and welcoming home to many looking for hope and opportunity and to acknowledge their struggle and protect their rights. The state of Michigan's Office of Global Michigan offers supportive services to refugees as they adjust to their new homes. The services and resources provide a foundation for the rebuilding of these refugees' lives. Five Michigan agencies have provided initial reception and placement services for the first 30 to 90 days in the United States for people who have just arrived in the country with refugee status. This is possible with help from the Federal Bureau of Population, Refugees and Migration in the Department of State. Organizers of the World Refugee Day encourage residents to recognize the perseverance and accomplishments of their new neighbors and reflect on the severity of the global refugee crisis. Next for this week, the Friends of the St. Clair River has launched an online voting competition for its 2021 Sturgeon Story Contest that uses donations to determine the winner of the poster contest. Fifth grade students throughout St. Clair County have worked on and submitted posters, with 275 having been collected this year. Hosts of the competition have narrowed it down to 14 finalists and it will now be up to donators to decide the winner. This year marks the eighth annual Sturgeon Story Contest hosted by the Friends of the St. Clair River, which is made to coincide with the annual Blue Water Sturgeon Festival. Donators have raised, uh, or donations raised by the voting uh, support free Sturgeon Science school field trips for hundreds of fifth grade classes every year. To view the 14 finalists, go to sturgeonfestival.com. Voting is uh, open and available through August 22nd, and the top three vote-getters will each get a $50 gift card. The art uh, from all 14 finalists will be displayed in the 2022 Lake Sturgeon calendar. Also in the news for this week, I want to inform our viewers that the St. Clair Historical Museum is once again open on Sundays, with hours of 1.30 to 4.30. The museum is featuring new displays, including an informational display about the City of St. Clair's first community hospital, which was recently demolished. In addition to the information which is being shared on the First Community Hospital and the stories that will be told, the Ingalls Sewing Room display is now available for viewership at the museum as well. Due to the coronavirus pandemic, the museum had been closed for the past year, but now visitors are welcome once again and ongoing renovations are continued to further develop the ever-improving visitor experience. I would absolutely encourage my viewers to stop and check it out, as the Historical Museum in St. Clair is one of my favorite attractions in the city. Also in the news for this week, St. Mary's Catholic Church in St. Clair is holding their annual car raffle. The winner can choose a 2021 Ford Escape S or $25,000 in cash. Tickets are sold for $100 each and only 500 tickets are needed to raffle off the Ford Escape. If less than 500 tickets are sold, the drawing will revert to a 50-50 raffle. The drawing is being held this Sunday, June 27th. Tickets are available for purchase at St. Mary's offices at 800 Orchard Street, as well as locations of the showroom desk at Bill McDonald Ford or at Warwater Brewery in downtown St. Clair. For more details, please feel free to call St. Mary's at 
2255. Now for the last portion of this week's show. Before we wrap things up with the introduction to a new freighter, I want to mention to our audience the name of a baseball player who could very likely be a household name in the sports world very quickly. Residents all across Michigan are proud of their storied and successful baseball team, the Detroit Tigers. While many families have passed down the tradition of Tigers baseball from one generation to the next, a great number of casual fans have drifted away from the team in the last several years, as the Tigers have been going through a rebuild phase. For those who don't know, a rebuild is when a team trades away their valuable major league players with expiring contracts to acquire new prospects who are soon to join the major league, with the intentions of creating a team that can play competitive baseball after a couple of down years. The Tigers have been in one of those rebuild phases for the last five years or so, which is one of the longest rebuilds in Major League history. Due to the length of this rebuild, a lot of fans have drifted away from the team, but there is hope on the horizon for the Tigers, with a new manager at the helm and several of those prospects that were traded for or drafted now debuting in the Major Leagues. One such player is Matt Manning, a starting pitcher who is er, exciting fans with a powerful fastball and a pitch combination that draws swings and misses. Manning debuted for the Tigers last week with a quality start and is expected to stay on the team until a couple of players come back from the injured list. The timetables for those players to return are hard to predict, and we don't know how long Manning will be playing in the major leagues this season before the staff determines that it is more valuable for him to sharpen his skills against a lower level of competition prior to becoming a regular in the major leagues. Manning is expected to be one of the best pitchers on the Tigers for many years to come and perhaps one of the best in the sport, so it is exciting to watch him develop and see him face major league competition. I'd encourage my viewers to tune in and watch the Tigers, as for the foreseeable future, Manning will be starting every fifth day. That's going to do it for this week's local news. As you know, I like to end my On the River segment by introducing you to one of the freighters that you may see passing by on our beautiful St. Clair River. This week, I want to introduce you to a self-unloading lake bulk carrier referred to as the John J. Boland. The ship is named after Boland, a pioneering Great Lakes ship owner and manager. The ship was built by the Bay Shipbuilding Company in Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin, and was launched on March 10th of 1973 for the American Steamship Company. It had originally gone by the name of Charles E. Wilson, but was renamed after Boland in the year 2000, making it the fourth ship to go by the name John J. Boland. As Great Lakes freighters are sold from one company to another or even scrapped, it is not uncommon for ships to take on a name that has already been used to refer to a previous ship. But the Boland stands out as there have been three ships to have already gone by this name. Boland is a vessel in the program which also includes the Indiana Harbor, Walter J. McCarthy, and the American Mariner, all of which have been a featured freighter for the On the River segment in weeks past. The ship is 680 feet long with a carrying capacity of 34,000 tons. If you happen to see the John J. Boland passing by on the St. Clair River, I would encourage you to stop and check it out, perhaps sharing the story of its famously reused name, if you have an opportunity to do so. And that's going to do it for this week's edition of On the River. I hope you all found something of interest to take away from the show this week. The next several days are expected to provide lots of rain and thunderstorms, but hopefully that will set us up for a lot of grass and plant growth, which will put us in play for a beautiful second half to the summer. I hope you all have a great week, and I look forward to being back with you next time. Once again, I'm your host, Joe Morgalek, and this has been On the River. <laughs>